postings. In these notes, we're going to go over energy and energy transfer. Um, so far in the unit, what we've talked about is autotrophs and heterotrophs, and saw that we could put organisms on our planet into two categories, either autotrophs, where they're going to capture energy from the sun and make their own food, or heterotrophs, uh, who are going to have to eat other living things in order to get their energy. Um, so in these notes, uh, we're going to take a little bit further. I'm going to go a little bit fast in the beginning, um, since we've already kind of covered the first part of the notes, and then I'll slow down once we get to uh, the portion that we have not talked about just yet. All right, so uh, we started with an analogy of a car because we all know what happens when a car runs out of gasoline. So we know cars use gasoline in order um, uh, to actually move, to go. Uh, that is their energy. Without gasoline, a car will not run. So if your car runs out of gas, doesn't matter how many times you turn the key, pump on the gas pedal, it's not going to go anywhere. The good thing with a car is you can go to a gas station, get some more gasoline, put it in the car. Living things are going to be very similar, but with a living thing, you don't get that second chance. So when a living thing runs out of energy, it's done. So the main source of energy for all life on Earth is the sun. So the sun provides energy for all living things on our planet. And without the sun, there would be no life. So no sun equals no life. Now, there's a little bit of a problem that we have here. Um, the energy that's coming from the sun is abiotic. It's non-living. And heterotrophs require energy in living things. Um, that's where they get their energy from. So in order to get this abiotic factor, this energy from the sun into living things, that's where autotrophs come in. So autotrophs are going to take that energy from the sun and turn it into a form that heterotrophs can use. Uh, in this case, we're talking about when a plant makes its own food, we're talking about glucose. So plants will actually uh, turn the sun's energy, uh, or sorry, capture the sun's energy um, in the form of a glucose molecule. And then finally, heterotrophs can use that. So if all the autotrophs were to die, there would be a huge problem because heterotrophs can't get energy from the sun directly. They need the autotrophs to turn it into a more usable form for them, to bring it into living things. So we could also say no autotrophs equals no life. Okay? And the reason for that is you'd have a domino effect. If autotrophs were to die out, if you think about what feeds on autotrophs, the herbivores. If herbivores die, then carnivores die, and omnivores and decomposers and so on and so on. So you have a breakdown of the food chain. So what I'd like you to do right now is think about why would everything die? So take a little bit of time right now, think about why would everything die if autotrophs were to die. And there's actually going to be two reasons. Okay? The first one I'm going to tell you right now, and you can put this down on your paper too, uh, is oxygen. There would be no oxygen for living things. I want you to think of the second one based on what we've just talked about. What else would we be lacking? Alright, so um, thinking about what would happen if autotrophs were to die, um, you should have gotten oxygen, so there would be a lack of oxygen, and without oxygen living things can't exist on our planet. And the second thing you should have gotten is that there would be no energy. Okay, uh, Without autotrophs to bring energy into an ecosystem, into living things, nothing else is going to get energy. So even if that sun's burning bright and hot there without the plants, the sun's energy is nothing to heterotrophs. We need the autotrophs to convert it into a usable form for us. Okay. Second question, do you think this would include humans too? And justify your answer. So go ahead, take a little bit of time right now, and write down your response to this question.
All right, so thinking about this question, um, there's several ways you could break this down, but what it really comes down to is humans would also uh, die out too. Okay? We'd probably be able to survive for a very long time compared to other organisms, um, and unless someone invents a way to change the sun's energy into a usable form for us, like the autotrophs do, uh, then human beings would also uh, be a part of the, uh, the domino effect. All right, so why is energy so important? What do living things use energy for? So living things are going to need a constant supply of energy. And what they're gonna do with that constant supply of energy, um, they're gonna use it for things. So one thing that living things are gonna use energy for is to grow. Okay. It takes energy to grow. Growing is adding cells to your body. So when you're growing, it takes a lot of energy to do that. Um, right now, you guys are teenagers. And when you're a teenager, you know, they always make fun of it in movies and stuff. Teenagers eat a lot of food, especially teenage boys. Uh, and that's because they are growing. So they do need a large amount of energy because they are growing. Um, in fact, you're growing right now faster than any point in your life, um, aside from when you're developing inside your mom. Um, so you're growing faster now than you have at any other point in your life. Second thing is movement. Uh, right now, as you are writing, uh, it takes energy to write. Um, other movements, running, jumping, skipping, blinking. So even blinking your eyes, that's a movement. That takes energy. It takes energy to reproduce. I don't mean the act of reproducing, so not male, female getting together to reproduce, um, but actually reproduction within the female. So it takes a lot of energy to put that baby together. Um, when I was pregnant with my son uh, and I was teaching, I would go home right after work. I'd get home about 4 o'clock. I'd try to stay awake, grade papers, do stuff like that. Uh, but around 4.30, I would usually fall asleep, and uh, I wouldn't wake up until like 5 o'clock the next morning. Um, so I'd sleep, actually sleep over 12 hours because the energy that I would normally be using for myself um, was going towards the baby. Um, so the baby was getting the energy for the development of the baby. Finally, everyday functions. So you need energy for everyday functions. Uh, what you don't realize uh, is thoughts also take energy. So when you're sitting there and you, you, know, you try to sit still, you don't move, like, oh, I'm not using any energy. It's taking thoughts and uh, the energy uh, is still being used by thoughts inside your head. So thinking also takes energy as well. So everyday functions, the smallest thing, actually requires energy. All right, go ahead and write this down. So once energy enters, enters into an ecosystem, what's going to happen to it? Okay, so we already know that energy comes from the sun. Okay, so energy is going to come from the sun, and autotrophs are going to capture it during photosynthesis and trap it, trap the ener sun's energy in glucose. When heterotrophs come along, like this cow here, uh, it is going to eat the plant, and the energy is going to be transferred to the cow. And then when the cow gets eaten, it's going to get transferred to this line here. Um, so energy is actually going to move through an ecosystem in, and don't hate me for this, one direction. <laughs> okay, so energy moves through an ecosystem in one direction. Um, once the energy gets all the way down here to the very end of the, um, the food chain here, uh, when, it, when this line gets broken apart by decomposers, the energy is going to be lost. It's going to be lost as heat, it's going to be lost as uh, gases, so that's why we say energy moves in one direction. Once it gets to the end of the food chain here, it's going to be lost. Alright, so an actual food chain um, is what we're looking at here on this side. So go ahead, take some time right now and write down uh, the information for food chains.
All right, so on the last slide, we talked about the fact that energy is going to move in one direction. Um, and our food chains are a visual representation of how the energy is moving in one direction um, as organisms eat each other. Uh, so each level in a food chain is going to be called a trophic level. Um, so if we're looking at this picture here, um, there is uh, a total of five different trophic levels. And I'm going to start here by numbering this one. So this is the first trophic level. This is the second trophic level here. These fish represent the third trophic level. The squid represents the fourth trophic level. Finally, the shark represents the fifth trophic level. Okay, so each level in a food chain, one, two, three, four, five. This food chain has five trophic levels. Now this is a marine uh, food chain. Uh, if you look here, terrestrial uh, food chains usually only have about three or four levels. Um, but each level will be called a trophic level. Now, when you create a food chain, uh, you have to be very careful on how you create the food chain because food chains are about showing which direction the energy is flowing, how energy is being passed along through an ecosystem. Um, so you have to make sure you put your arrows in the correct direction. So here, uh, all food chains start with a plant. Um, so here we have our plant. In this case, it's uh, phytoplankton, tiny little microscopic plants. Uh, when the phytoplankton are eaten by the zooplankton, the energy that they trapped in the sun in the form of glucose molecules will be passed to our zooplankton. When the zooplankton are eaten uh, by these fish, the energy gets transferred to the fish. When the squid eats the fish, energy is transferred to the squid. And when the uh, shark eats the squid, energy is transferred to the shark. Okay, so the arrows are showing which direction the energy is being transferred. Um, a common mistake that some students make is to put the arrows in the opposite direction. And what you're saying there is if you do that, some people do that and say, oh, it's because the shark is eating that. So it's pointing to the direction of what the shark is eating. But it's not about that. It's about energy transfer. So if you put the uh, arrows in the other direction, you're saying that when the shark uh, is eaten by the squid, the energy goes to the squid. And when the squid is eaten by the fish, the energy goes to the fish. And when the fish is eaten, so on, so on. So that's the wrong way. Okay, so you want to make sure you put your arrows in the correct direction, showing you which way energy flows when something gets eaten.